broken bridge shuffle is divisive you know it it's it looks real it appears to be a real shuffle it looks like the cards are really being shuffled but really it's just um it's a deception it's very decide divisive the, the deck stays in order you know the deck doesn't shuffle broken bridge shuffle a deck that does not shuffle it's divisive I am Daniel Madison. The passion culminates in the professional. In this video, I'm going to teach you a very intricate, knuckle busting, difficult, false table shuffle that I call the Broken Bridge Shuffle. It was inspired by Steve Forte. I've seen a few other people magicians challenge this concept the idea of making a bridge shuffle false um lee asher bj bueno michael weber they all have great work on on this idea of making a bridge shuffle false i believe that this one is superior for a few different reasons uh, mainly and that's not arrogance that's just the experience that's just, that's just the nature of it for me this is my solution i fell in love with the bridge shuffle and if you know me, which I assume a lot of you watching do, you'll know that I never shuffle playing cards. I haven't fairly shuffled a deck of playing cards in the past 20 years. So when I discovered the bridge shuffle, I just had to find a false way of doing it. And I wasn't happy with, um, although commendable, I wasn't happy with the, the methods that existed. They didn't look fair enough to me to use, so I had to come up with my own. And they do look acceptable, by the way, so hats off to Lee, to BJ, and to Michael. Um, but I always advise people to, to use mine, to, to go for my solution first. Uh, here's what it looks like. Get yourself a deck of playing cards. This is a knuckle busting sleight of hand uh, concept. So it's gonna take a lot of time. This video is probably gonna be quite long. And we're in the season of false shuffles and I wanted to give a knuckle busting one because a lot of people are saying that the shuffles that I'm giving away at the minute that I've taught over the past few videos are a little bit easy, a little bit simple. But some people find it difficult and that's all right. Everybody's at a different level, but this one really is a knuckle buster. It took me years to get perfect. So don't expect to be able to do this one perfectly straight away. Now I'm not gonna teach uh, the perfect riffle shuffle in this. It's not my place to teach that, uh, but I will teach you ways around that and other ways of, of getting into the riffle to, uh, to begin with. So this is how you shuffle two halves of a deck together in the bridge fashion. They perfectly interweave and the deck is shuffled. Uh, this is how you do it convincingly. This is how you do it deceptively. I am Daniel Madison and this is the Broken Bridge Shuffle. This is the broken bridge shuffle. A false shuffle that keeps the entire deck completely in order, yet it appears to be a completely real, fair shuffle. I think what makes this fly, I think what makes this the most deceptive table shuffle of all, in my opinion, is that moment where you've bridged the cards this moment right here where they fall together like almost it looks like there's no control whatsoever over the deck at that point yet with the mechanics 
apply to this. As you can see, the order is completely uh, retained. I'm not sure if retained or restored is the right word. I've always kind of been on the fence because the two halves do actually shuffle together, but they, they never completely uh, merge. So they never completely fit together. <laughs> so we're gonna get straight up into it so I don't take up too much time uh, but in saying that I don't want to rush this it's a very intricate and difficult knuckle busting shuffle so um, so it's gonna take a lot of practice time persistence and effort so as always my deck is in brand new deck order so we're gonna start with the deck in order and the right hand is gonna pull the bottom half to the right left hand is going to pull the top half to the left uh, as so now the packet on the right needs to go inside the packet on the left what i mean by this here's a simple way of explaining what that means this packet needs to go inside this so this shuffles first and then this shuffle continues and then this shuffles last so the the top card and the bottom card on this side is on top I mean, uh, they're both on the outside so the bottom card is on the outside the top card is on the outside this packet is completely inside this packet um, and I will explain the reason for that right now so we merge the two parts together when we get to this point here I'm going to strip out the bottom part I'm going to strip it back out as you can see they never went together now it's important that this is on the inside because when I do the strip, it needs to look like I'm pulling a pile from the bottom and putting it on the top. The visual uh, deception here is the top card. So if you're looking at the top card as the, as the victim, you're looking at the top card, you see the bottom pile go from the bottom to the top, or at least it appears so. It's actually coming from the inside and, going, and it goes on the top. Um, to, to make that make more sense, if I put that packet on the outside, if I put the bottom packet on the outside, when we get to this position here, and the actions that follow the mechanics of this mean that this packet has to be taken out and put on top. Watch the top card. I'm taking the top half and putting it back on top. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So that's why it's imperative for uh, the right hand the right packet to go inside. So that's how we begin. We're gonna pull the bottom packet to the right and this packet's gonna go inside this. Now, it's not my place to teach the perfect riffle shuffle. It's not my place to teach that and this isn't the video for it. I do wanna look into whether or not I can teach it um, from a moral point of view. Um, but as for this video, I'm not gonna teach it. So hopefully a lot of you watching will know how to do this. Now, it's important that you get a really good, strong weave between the two halves. Hoping, hoping for the best is one for one. So you get a perfect one for one weave. It's not vital though. Um, the reason I always try and get a perfect one for one is because it makes this moment um, more realistic, more believable. It makes it last longer. Uh, um, it, it plays, it, it acts out as a fair shuffle. It feels, it looks, and it sounds like a fair shuffle. If you get clunky piles where they're kind of put together in a very in a very scruffy way, at this point, it gets a bit messy and it gets a bit harder to control. In fact, I think I just messed up. Yes, that's even, even in trying to show you how difficult it was, I messed up. Um, so we'll get back in order. So it's not my place to do that. There are, play, there are plenty of places where you can learn how to do that, how you can do the, uh, this is kind of the up, the upper perfect shuffle. Or you can also, depending on what deck you're using in your skill level, you can also do this uh, downwards. I'm not used to doing it down. I, I much prefer uh, doing it upwards. So I'm gonna teach it to you like this. We're gonna, we're gonna literally just riffle the right half into the left half. So once you're in that position where you have riffled these packets together, right now the grips and the finger positions are vital. It's vital that you follow along every step, every nuance I'm about to say. So once that packet is on the inside, it's inside by about a centimeter. There's about a centimeter in it just there. Maybe a little bit over a centimeter. Uh, and that's good enough for me. So 
Right now, finger three of the left hand is pressing against the corner of this packet, the, the outer corner of this packet. Finger two and the thumb have a very tight grip, a very tight grip on either side, the thumb on the back, finger two on the front. Finger one is gonna press down, adding a lot of pressure. Now, you can see how much pressure is there because everything um, is rising on this side. So on this hand needs to counter that. So the same thing's happening here, basically. Uh, I have the same grip, finger three on the outer corner, which is vital. Finger two on the outside, the thumb on the back. Once they're in position, once I'm happy, the right hand is gonna shift grip. Now I can completely let go. The thumb's gonna press down on the middle. Fingers two and three are gonna grab this packet here, the right packet here, and the, and the thumb goes all the way at the back. So the grip is, is right here, just like this. And baby finger, pinky finger is gonna press against the corner just here. Now the pressure between the baby finger, the pinky, and finger three of the left hand is vital. It is vital. So this is the, the grip that you're aiming for right now. Finger one on top, two and three at the front, the, and finger four, the pinky at the back. Now, fingers two and three and the thumb are gonna lift everything up to create that bridge. As I do this, the left hand pushes inwards so that the, the right hand can stay pretty much where it is, or at least the pinky, the right pinky stays exactly where it is. Watch the pinky. It doesn't lift the table, it stays exactly where it is. Now from this position, fingers two and three are gonna slowly let playing cards release uh, from that pile, from, from the middle, from the grip. And so all the cards are gonna cascade towards each other. Now the most important thing that's happening right now is the grip between finger three of the left hand and the pinky finger of the right hand. Because when I let go, watch what happens inside the cascade when I start to let go. I'll try and do this slowly. You can see they're going in at opposite angles. So I'll let that fall and complete and show you the situation. So the situation right now is, it looks like this. The, the two piles have not completed. They've not gone together perfectly. And that is because number one is finger three and finger four of the opposite hands which, which are on the opposite corners which causes the cards to go like this separate inwards towards me but also the grip between finger two and the thumb of the left hand is so tight that these packets can't go together so when the cards fall into each other not only is this pressure stopping them but they're coming in at this angle so every single one of them stops on my thumb, on my left thumb. So they can't possibly come together. So I end up with a complete separation. It's the easiest thing now to just pull those packets apart, put this to the bottom, and we're back in order. But it's not as simple as that. We need to make it look like a real shuffle. We need, we need to make it look like we're not running away, like we're not up to no good. It needs to look fair. So this is how we do it. So. The bottom packet to the right hand side goes inside the left packet. Um, the pinky hits the edge. The finger one goes on top. Fingers two and three at the front, the thumb at the back. Finger three vital there. The pinky vital there. Lift up, release. Everything's cascaded. I can feel, I know from the way it feels, there's no single card interweave with the other completely they all got completely separated so as soon as they've fallen i'm going to keep a grip between finger two and the thumb of the back uh, the right hand is going to straighten these packets up so that they are uh, straight uh, the left hand is obviously going to help but the grip needs to stay there between finger two and, th and the thumb so the thumb of the right hand simply pushes in at the back and the fingers two and three pull this to the side until they are straight. This thumb helps at the back to straighten up. So now I'm left with this situation where the two packets are completely straight, but they're not together. They're completely separate of one another, although they are interweaved. Now, another reason why finger two and the thumb, the grip still remains throughout is right now it's hiding 
a big part of the deception is hiding the visual of being able to see the difference between the packets. So I even move finger two over and let finger three in as well to, to cover up the front. The same is happening on this side. Everything's hiding behind fingers two and three with finger one bowing or stretching across the top like so, so that you can't see the deception. So that from the front or from above, it looks like the, the piles are together. But really, if I expose everything, then there's about, uh, there's well over an inch in there. There's about three, maybe two and a half centimeters. Uh, you could go, you could push in much further, um, but you don't need to run. We're not being chased. No one's seeing this yet. It looks like a real shuffle at this point. So what I do, let's go back a step. When I'm in this position, I straighten up. I riffle up the back. I even bowl the deck to let some air in. So it looks like I'm just straightening the deck up. And it looks like that shuffle, that very moment of the shuffle has been complete. It looks like the, the, the deck is shuffle. Now when I strip this inside packet off and complete the flourish, uh, the, the flourish, the shuffle, it looks like I'm just doing a, an extra shuffle. So it looks like two shuffles have taken place. So now what I do is I pull the bottom packet out and put it on top. Bear in mind, this is the bottom packet. So when it goes on top, uh, left finger one, left thumb one keeps the two packets from contacting each other. So I'm, I'm basically keeping a huge break with my thumb as I place this on top. I now grab the lower packet uh, uh, and I split it in two. So I split this packet in two. I pull a half out, the bottom half, slap it on top, and then I go back for the rest, slap this on top, and the deck is back in order. So I'll do that at a little bit of a speed now that you know what's going on, now that you can see everything, um, just so that you can see the separation of the two shuffles. Uh, separating the sequence, separating the two shuffles into a sequence rather than one full shuffle. So this is the broken bridge shuffle. I straighten up, get some air in there. I'll expose how far in they are right now so you can see. Uh, and at this point, uh, after I after I bowed and riffled up the back, I strip as if it's the bottom packet, top, one, two, and the deck is back in brand new deck order. I'm Daniel Madison, that is Broken Bridge False Shuffle. So the Broken Bridge Shuffle, everything, just like every everything in sleight of hand, everything in the deceptive practices, from now on is gonna take time, it's gonna take patience, it's gonna take persistence, and practice. You need to do it in front of a mirror, constantly practice and don't ever show it until you until you can do it properly, until you believe it is good enough to show. Now you have to be your own judge of that. Now I don't mind being the judge of that. So if you want to tag me in videos of you doing this move or any of my moves, I will be brutal. If you're not ready, if you've rushed and you've done the move or the slide or the trick before you're ready, I will tell you, I will be telling you, it's an important part of learning, an, an important part of uh, the mentor-student relationship is you being able to take uh, constructive criticism, I guess, is the right way to describe it. So don't don't be upset if I put you in your place with sleight of hand that you're doing badly. I'm Daniel Madison. Thanks for spending time with me. Thanks for learning the, the broken bridge shuffle. I'll see you next time.